I'm going to be replicating the Cryptek Mandrake Camouflage. This is an SKS 30 round duckbill magazine. That's been hydro dipped or hydro printed in the Cryptek Mandrake. So it looks pretty, uh, pretty freaking sweet. And uh, what I've got here is just uh, another larger magazine that I've done. Uh, just kind of just was trying out a new little camouflage. And uh, I'm just going to go over the process of uh, doing it by hand with a rattle can. If those of you all who follow my channel, you know that I really was into the ATAX FG camouflage and I tried to replicate that using a spray paint. And today I'm just going to go over um, doing that in the Mandrake. And I, I think my version turns out pretty well. Uh, that I've done, you know, I've shown several of my videos. I've painted my uh, SKS in that camouflage and my Mossberg 500. And I also want to mention that in this video, I'm going to be going over some different steps, some more additions I've done to make, uh, basically make the spray paint camouflage more longer lasting. So there's going to be like steps, like uh, uh, basically I'm going to uh, clean, every, clean and strip everything, get it, and then get a base layer set, yeah, and get my color base layer set after that and you're going to see all that and then get some of my tones going and we're going to finalize uh, with a clear coat. Like I said, I'm going to go into all that uh, step by step, detail by detail as quickly as possible. So let's, uh, let's get into the it. The very first step to making a good uh, spray paint uh, a rattle can job on uh, like your weapon or other sort of like items like that to making sure lo the longevity of it is making sure the surface you're going to be painting on is uh, clean and, and it's prepped and ready to have your paint adhere to it so it will it will cling on. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I learned this from Mon Tactical, is uh, using acetone is probably one of the um, the best sort of, a, I guess, sort of strippers and cleaners uh, that you can use. And reason being, it's sort of like an alcohol based um, in, in that sense that it uh, it dries off when you wipe it down. I'll show you real quick how well this this does work. And uh, this paint should come off pretty easy. I did not clear coat it. You can already see that I've taken off a pretty decent portion. And you want to go pretty lightly with the acetone. You don't want to get it on your skin. And usually I do wear gloves with this, but I, I don't have any with me today. And all I'm doing is I'm just rubbing it down with acetone, prepping the surface, uh, making sure that all the dirt and deb debris and old paint residue that could flake off is going to come off there. And that, like I said, that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm going to show another step that's also really good to do. And that is to tape off parts of uh, whatever you wanted to paint. Tape it off so, so your paint doesn't get in there. I basically don't want any extra paint thickening up um, the, where um, my magazine goes into my magwell. But that's just something, like I said, so there, there's sort of your first basic steps, prepping your surface, taping off what you don't need to get painted. So uh, we will continue on with the next step. Alrighty, so uh, yeah, like I said, that was the first step in the creating the longevity is making sure, as you can tell on here, the surface is clean and dry and prepped. Yes, there's still a little bit of residue left from older paint, but uh, I feel like there's no need in sanding on this. Uh, you guys out there who have uh, sand blasters, now that is something that uh, is highly valued for prepping a surface. But I do not have this. This is pretty much done all by hand uh, out here. So on to the, the next step of the longevity. Now, this is what I recommend before you do any base layers of your painting. And uh, basically, an adhesion promoter is sort of like a clear primer. And I have shaken this up really well. This probably requires um, uh, m the most shaking compared to uh, the spray paint. But yeah, you're going to want to shake it up real well. There's different brands out there. Um, there, it's actually can, can be fairly expensive, up to twenty dollars a can for this, but I think it's well worth it to to make sure your paint is going to adhere well, uh, especially if you know the paint you're using isn't like a paint primer. So, what I'm going to do here is just spray it down real quick. All right, this is very strong, so I recommend so if you're indoors, please use a mask. If, and but I'm outdoors today, so that's the adhesion prom promoter. Now, you want to start your base coat within 10 minutes of this or it will dry and become useless. So right now it's just like a glue. So what I'm going to do is I have my first two base layers for my Cryptek Mandrake. I have like a lighter OD green and I have a tan. And they're both in the rust oil and camouflage. You can see in there, you know, you got a lot of tans and greens for your base layers. I'm not going to use real heavy colors for that. Like I said, I'm using, using lighter ones. And I'm going to put these on real, real gently. You'll see here. Just like that, very gently, my tan layer. I'm 
and that is uh, putting on the base layers. Like I said, done uh, very lightly, very lightly indeed. So, and then I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes before I continue. On to the next step. I'm actually doing sort of three layers of paint. There's your base layer that I just uh, got finished doing. Not the best, but I'm not really concerned about it uh, because I have that adhesion promoter on there. I'm not going to do a double coat because, like I said, there's more paint coming up. So this sort of the middle layer, I've got these two uh, brighter colors, actually, sort of like a vanilla and a, like a real, like a light OD green. And like, I'm, like I said, these are going to be my mid layers. So what I'm going to do here is I have a stencil I cut out that I've used before that I actually really like. I think it works really well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the stencil and I'm going to create that mid-level with the brighter colors and then I'm going to finish up some with some car trunk netting uh, for the final layer and I'll show you that here real quick. It's gonna, I think it's going to turn out really good but this is actually sort of an experiment. <laughs> Believe it or not. Let's check it out. Use a little bit of vanilla here. Very lightly. Alright, looking good so far. And while that's dry, I'm going to switch over to my green and do a real fine because this is a very bright green. Let's do it a little bit. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. A little bit of cross pattern. All right, that looks pretty neat so far, and I'm gonna let that dry. All right, I'm on my final layer of paint. So, done the base layer, the middle layer. And then the final, and this is where it gets really fun. I'm going to pull out, I saw this on a YouTube video. I actually don't uh, remember the YouTube user's name. So I apologize to whoever it was because I don't remember your name, but it was an awesome idea. So I'm going to use, this is car trunk netting, and it creates your honey, a really good hun overall honeycomb pattern. I'm going to lay that down here. What's cool is you can scrunch this up to give it sort of the a twisted, sort of a stretched look that the Cryptek offers. And now I've got that set up how I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some of my deep forest green on there first. See how that looks. You're just, just spraying it on very randomly. And then now I've got like a, a brown, almost a forest brown for another darker earth tone on this mandrake. Alright, and what I'm going to do is uh, let that dry. I'm going to peel it off. Alright, I'm going to check the pattern out after uh, that trunk nest matting. And man, that is pretty sweet. So, there's two, about two more things I'm going to do before that clear coat because I noticed, uh, noticed some things. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more white and a little more vanilla in there to kind of break it up. Sort of right in the middle. Try to get a good pattern there. All right, I like that. And then the last thing I'm going to do painting-wise before I clear coat is I'm going to subdue the paint, uh, the overall scheme a little bit with uh, the original. This is the lighter OD green I was using. So let's check that out. And that was very done very lightly. So I'm trying something different on the other side of the magazine is I put my base layers of camouflage using my car trunk netting and put on that mid layer of the brighter colors that green and that uh, that sort of vanilla and then I'm going to finish up with the stencil with the darker so I'm going to see how that turns out and then uh, basically just give my final uh, overview of uh, sort of you know the two the several different ways I've I went to getting the camouflage uh, pattern come out of this Cryptek. Alright so the paint is just about dry for the clear coat and I just want to mention a few things about using a clear coat. Now this is a gloss and you can usually get matte. Um, I don't think it's a big deal. I grabbed this gloss because it was this is, it just uh, added a double the coverage so I'm just going to give it one uh, good layer of clear coat and like I said with the gloss it's going to smooth over. You're, when you use whatever you're going to paint it's going to get roughed up. It's going to get the matte finish. It won't take very long. Trust me on that. Uh, but, I, but another thing I want to mention about the clear coat is I used to not uh, do the clear coat because it was fogging up uh, the colors underneath but 
I, I guess this is just a better clear coat. I went ahead and tried it again. I actually really like the Rust-Oleum clear coat. I think it, it gave it just a, it, it takes off a lot of the residue um, of the different layers of paint on there and I, I really liked it so far and if you really want to increase the longevity of your paint scheme on you know, whatever it is uh, you're doing and there's before the clear coat then uh, I highly recommend the, those things I showed you earlier, like the adhesion promoter and then adding this uh, clear coat in that's really going to help you out when you do a homemade like spray paint camouflage like that but I'm just going to clear coat it real quick uh, you can do several coats I'm just going to do the one give a good even coat Alrighty, and that is pretty much all of it there. And I'm once it all dries, I'm gonna just uh, have just a quick discussion. I'll go ahead and wrap everything up. What I've done here, and uh, to go over basically what I think makes a good camouflage uh, paint job uh, good and long lasting is, like I said, use the adhesion promoter before you get started painting, and then uh, as you continue on, what makes the Cryptek good is uh, some stencils, uh, the car trunk mesh netting. Uh, works awesome. Those are those are a few things, and then when you continue on to finalize, you're gonna want to use uh, a clear coat. Like I said, I haven't, you know, it hasn't been my favorite in the past, but I found out it really does help uh, keep the pattern on whatever you painted it on, keep keeping your paint on it, and it increases the longevity of your paint job, so you're not wasting your time and it just it just comes off unnecessarily. So to recap, what I've done uh, here is uh, here is the original mandrake below. There's what I've done. And then to just uh, talk about now, what I've done here, this is the side I showed what I painted on camera. This is the side I did off camera. The only difference is uh, the trunk mesh netting shows up more in this pattern because I did it uh, more like later on in the pattern. Now with this one, I used the, the mesh netting early on, then I finished up with my stencil here and then uh, the other thing that's different is I use more tan to break up my pattern when I was done, whereas on uh, the first side I use a little bit more of the green. So uh, you be the judge. I think they both look awesome, you know, especially right up to the Cryptek. You know, obviously not the real thing, but when you're doing it at home by hand, just having fun, I, I don't think it's a big deal. And the cool thing about it, it's going to be different every single time you do it. That's what really makes the Cryptek really neat is it's different there's no you know and that's with any camouflage that the idea is to break things up uh, you know for that to, for the camouflage to work so there's a final look at it that's the first side I paint on camera that's what I painted off camera so different and another thing different methods pretty much achieving the same results so that's uh, that's pretty much what I got on that so thank you for your time so Mr. Lee Nine is signing out and have a good